Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back. This is gonna be somewhat of a long video. With the beginning of race season, I wanted to kind of go through some of the rules that Spartan has on doing some of their obstacles. Um, these are gonna include some of changes that went into effect midway through 2019, and then also all of the rules that were uh, established before then. I just wanna clear up any misconceptions. Just to note, this is specific for Spartan races. Also, keep in mind that these are more for the competitive runners. If you're running uh, Spartan in the open heats, they're way less stringent on following the rules. It's more of an honor system with the open heats. So these rules are enforced in the age group runs and the elite runs. And so the elite are the runs that you see on TV and the professionals that uh, run the sport. The way I want to do this is I want to start off with the rules that have changed. So without further ado, let's get into this. The biggest difference in 2020 this year that was different in previous years is the distance of each run. There's been talks that Spartan has wanted to try to make a run at becoming an Olympic sport. And so in order to uh, have more consistent and set rules, they have decided to go from varied distance format to a set distance format. And so what I mean is in previous years, a Spartan sprint was anywhere between three and five miles and like 20 to 24 obstacles, I think. It would depend on each venue how far exactly the distance was of each run. And, and so I think this year they just want to have a set distance, which for the Spartan sprint is going to be a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. The super is a 10K, 6.2 miles. And then the beast is a half marathon, which is 13 miles. Um, as far as the amount of obstacles go, I think that's still gonna vary from venue to venue. There is still some variation because I personally preferred the variation. Uh, I don't wanna do these races over and over in different cities, but do the same race just in a different city. Uh, last year and you know previous years, it the obstacles would be in different orders. Some obstacles would be here. Some obstacles wouldn't be at the next city. And so it just kind of at least made it a little bit different in each venue. So I'm really hoping they kind of stick to that model um, in regards to the obstacles this year. Also, there is a Spartan Ultra. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that set distance is for this year, but in previous years, it was around 30 miles. Uh, so it was, it was a little bit more than two beasts, which as I mentioned before, we're around the half marathon mark. So I would imagine they're gonna keep the ultra around 30 miles again. The new distances are going to be shorter this time. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I preferred some of the longer races, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it works out this year. All right, now getting into the rule changes that went into effect in regards to some of the obstacles uh, midway through last year, which are going to be effective this year. One of the biggest ones was the Atlas carry. And in previous years, you had to carry the Atlas ball to the next flag, do five burpees, pick it up and carry it back to the original position. They changed the rule now to where all you have to do is carry it, circle around the flag, and then drop it off at the original position. So no burpees this time. And then the other biggest one uh, is in regard to the bucket brigade or the bucket carry. Previous years, you had to keep the bucket, you know, below your head. You could, most people carried it in front of them. I did see a couple people like somehow get it on their back and lean forward. I, I don't know how, but, but now they are allowing you to carry it up on your shoulder or on your head. Granted, these buckets are pretty heavy, so carrying it on your head probably isn't the smartest thing. Uh, I would imagine that's going to cause some neck and back issues, but on the shoulder uh, definitely makes it a little bit easier, especially um, if it's a longer loop that you have to do with the bucket. It, it allows a little bit more variation in your grip, so you can carry it on your shoulder for a little bit. If you get tired, you can bring it out front, and you can, if you get tired, you can switch to the other shoulder. So it's a way to not have to break stride to readjust your grip or anything like that. Another rule change from uh, mid-2019 was, and I didn't even know this was a rule to begin with, but you have to go under the dunk wall. Um, apparently in previous years, there was the option to walk around the dunk wall. Y'all seen the dunk wall, it's 
It's a wall that comes all the way down to the water. All you have to do is go right up under it. It's not like you have to really swim underwater or anything like that. You're really just dunking your head just enough to get the crown of your head up under the wall. And it's not like the wall's way up under the water. Um, there have been a couple venues where it seemed like the bottom of the wall and the bottom of uh, the pit where you're actually standing is pretty thin, but it was, it was never anything to where it was uh, a big problem for me. Now I know a lot of people had issues with that. Um, I, I've seen a lot of comments about like germs, um, people nervous about getting in the muddy water. Always look out for your personal well-being. If you have cuts and you're nervous about getting something getting infected or getting the germs, you know, just walk around it. If you're doing the open heat, just walk around it. Like I said, these rules are more so for the age group and elite runners. Do whatever you're comfortable with. Obviously, I urge you to push yourself if you are uncomfortable with the underwater aspect of it, which I know a lot of people are. At least get down there, get to the wall, and talk yourself into it. Uh, if you're with a group, hold hands, you know, have somebody pull you through to the other side. You know, definitely just at least try it. Um, don't run around, don't go around it every single time if, if the underwater part is your fear. Definitely test it and try to make it. Uh, this whole race, the whole Spartan experience is to get you to do something that you are either uncomfortable doing or haven't tried before. So definitely um, push your limits throughout the whole race and especially during that dunk wall. And then one of the last rule changes that they had, apparently people were somehow almost climbing the fences of the herc hoist. Uh, the herc hoist is just a sandbag where you're pulling down. The official rule is that your hips must stay below the top of the fence. So I'm not exactly sure what people were doing to violate that rule. So it's not that big of a rule change to me. Um, I'm still just going and, and I'm pulling. You know, you can grab it, pull it, stand yourself up, and then kind of use your body weight to pull it back down. So I'm not exactly sure um, how people were doing it wrong, but apparently enough people were doing it wrong to where they wanted to state specifically that your hips must stay below the top of that fence. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the herc hoist. All right, so now the rest of these rules were pretty much standard uh, before the last year's changes. So in order to kind of continue to go through specific obstacles, I'm gonna start with like the monkey bars. Any of the obstacles that are like the monkey bars uh, where you're having to hang, so that would include monkey bars, twister, beater, uh, the multi-rig. Um, you are not allowed to help each other. That's uh, even in the open heats. And that's just for safety reasons. I know, let's see, five years ago when we started, uh, I was allowed to help uh, my sister-in-law and, and her friends do the monkey bars by allowing them to get on my shoulders and they just kind of, you know, loop through the monkey bars. They are no longer allowed to do that just because I think people were kind of falling onto other people and two people were getting hurt. And so uh, they're not allowed to help on those hanging type obstacles. The rope climb isn't as obvious as I would think it is. Uh, people weren't using the rope climb to climb the rope and hit the bell. Uh, after seeing video of it, I, I understand what they're talking about, but some people would climb the little trusses that are holding the ropes up, and they would climb that because it's more of a ladder, more like a ladder than the actual ropes. They would climb that, tap the bell, and say that they did the obstacle, and obviously it's the rope climb, it's not the truss climb, so just go out there and do the rope climb. Uh, if you don't know how to do a rope climb, I will make a tutorial. Just leave a comment down below and let me know that uh, you would like to know the technique that I use and I will include a video of that in the future. All right, there are some obstacles like the Z walls and the Olympus and a new one called the Helix. Some, I can't, I don't really know how to classify them, but they are obstacles where you're kind of hanging on. It's kind of like a, a wall of some sort and you're hanging on and having to move across. Uh, the rule with those are you're not allowed to grab the top of the wall to, in order to move um, and you can't touch the ground obviously or else you either have to restart or do your burpees. And so like I said, Z walls, Helix, the Olympus, where there are specific grips and you'll see them whenever you do them uh, that you must stay in contact with in order to uh, complete the obstacle according to the rule book. Uh, side note on the Z walls, Whenever you're going around the bend of the Z-wall, you are allowed to use that middle vertical support 
to, I guess help, it helps me keep my balance. So I have used that uh, once I found out that we are allowed to. That'll help you kind of stay close to the wall and prevent you from losing your grip. So just keep that in mind with a Z wall. So another rule specification in 2019, apparently shorter people were having to use the uh, vertical supports on certain obstacles in order to reach. So like say the monkey bars, uh, the monkey bars were kind of high, so they would kind of climb up the side and then get to the monkey bars and do the monkey bars. They changed the rule to where you're not allowed to do that at all. Uh, but I will say on the obstacles where you have to, you know, reach out into something in order to begin the obstacle, they do have blocks to help shorter people reach those. And I really haven't seen people have issues with that. If they are a little bit shy, it's, it's just by a little bit and it's easily maintained by a little hop to get to the first rung or, or the first monkey bar or first handle or anything like that. So there's no real work around that. Uh, you just kind of, if you're short, you know, just hopefully you can be able to jump and reach it. I, like I said, I personally haven't seen any issues with that, but apparently some people have had issues where they were using that. So just keep in mind, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Um, on the twister specifically, uh, you have the handles that rotate around. Apparently some people were using the actual bar in between the handles as well. Uh, that is not allowed. Uh, the twister is designed to where you use the handles and it twists with you. So just use the piece of equipment like it's designed to be used. You know, don't cheat yourself, don't cheat Spartan. Either you can or you can't. There's certain techniques that you can do. Hopefully this year I'll be able to go to some open houses and, and film some uh, techniques on how to do certain obstacles. But the twister is kind of just as much a momentum obstacle as it is a strength obstacle. Um, I did have one race in West Virginia where we did have a swimming portion and obviously the rule there is you have to have a life jacket. There was a guy there as people were running by he made sure that the life jackets were buckled up, tightened, and on. You had to keep the life jacket on throughout the whole swim and it, it was a, a decent swim and it was over midway through the bee so I mean everybody's gassed and what not anyway so it's just smart to leave your life jacket on don't risk any kind of um, accident or anything like that uh, note that there are people in canoes as you're swimming so you know if, if things start to go awry uh, there'll be people there around that can help on the cargo climbs which would include the vertical cargo and the a-frame uh, something that i saw even the elites get in trouble for last year were touching the uh, metal supports that may be in the middle of the cargo climb. So in the A-frame specifically, you have the structure that's holding the cargo, and then you have the middle support structure that's holding the cargo in it. Apparently one of the elites was too close to that middle support and they disqualified him, or I think gave him a time penalty for uh, using that middle support. So just keep in mind, whenever you're doing the cargo climbs to not use the metal support. I will say in the A-frame specifically, there is a horizontal bar that you just can't avoid. Um, there's no real uh, advantage to you know putting your foot on it or using that to climb. So you can touch that metal bar. It's just the pieces that are going up with you the, on the cargo climb that you are not allowed to use uh, to help you climb it up. All right, another thing that they kind of reminded us of, I don't know if this is an actual rule change or not, but they reminded us of last year was that you were not allowed to kick the cowbell. So whenever you're doing these obstacles, in order to get a completion, you must hit the cowbell at the end. So that includes all the hanging obstacles. Most of the obstacles really, you are required to hit the cowbell. And so some people would like get to the end of, or the last monkey bar or to the end of the multi-rig and like hold themselves up and swing up and kick the bell. Uh, that's no longer allowed. Um, I believe the rule as they told us was you can hit it with any part of your body, shoulders and up. So, and then obviously your hands. And then one of the biggest rules, they call it a Spartan killer for a reason. The spear throw is one try. Uh, if you're in an open heat, like I said, you know, you miss it by a little bit and you just want to try it again just to see if you can get it, you know, go for it. The only thing I say keep in mind is if there are a bunch of people, you know, in line or there's a huge group that you see approaching and stuff like that, 
don't just keep trying over and over again and holding up the line, you know, you know, if you have to give it a second try, if that doesn't work, you know, make the, make the sad walk to the burpee zone and, and get your burpees in so you can continue on your race and not hold up other people. But yeah, so for the age groups and elites, they have to get it in their first try or immediately start burpeeing out. That's just one of those, it's, it's kind of a cool obstacle because your best runners can go and the nerves can get the best of them and they miss that and you know have to do their 30 burpees. So like I just said, the penalty for any obstacle that you don't complete is 30 burpees, so just keep that in mind. And then one of the last ones that I have in my list here is the tire flip. The tire flip I only can recall doing in like two of my, I think nine or 11 races, I'm not exactly sure how many I did last year, but I think in two of them uh, I had to do the tire flip and the rule was you just had to pick up the tire, flip it over, come around, pick it up and flip it back over. And a technique that some of the elites were using were that they were picking it up and then going to the other side and kind of letting it down on their hands and then picking it up and flipping it back over. Because probably one of the hardest things in the tire flip is getting your hands under the tire to where you can lift it. So people, I know uh, myself included, I lifted it, put it down and put it on my foot or you know on my shoe. And then that way it was up a little bit to where I could get my hands in it and lift it back up and flip it over. Well, now the rule is you have to pick it up and it has to completely touch the ground on the other side when you flip it. So you can't let it down on your hands or let it down on anything else. It must, you must pick it up, flip it over, let it hit, and then come around, pick it up, flip it over again, and go about your race. So keep that in mind when you're doing the tire flip that you know, there's no real way around it. You're just gonna have to grit and bear it and hopefully get your hands back under it after, the, after that first flip. All right, so the penalty for any obstacle that you don't complete is 30 burpees. And the correct form of burpees that people get penalized for all the time is hands above your ears. You must jump and leave the ground and then your chest must touch the ground whenever you're doing the push-up portion of it. So you jump up, hands overhead, and then go down to the ground in a push-up position, chest all the way to the ground, 30 times. You know, I know for the elites and age groups, there are cameras that watch people in the burpee zone. It may not be the most considerate to count out your burpees out loud, but if you're running your race and you're trying to get that podium or do your personal best, count out your burpees at least audibly to yourself to where number one, you can keep track of it. And number two, if you're close to the camera, they can hear you counting them out too. And so you definitely don't want to go through the burpees. The Number one, the 30 burpees just gas you out. Number two, you don't want to go through all that and then at the end of the race see that you only did 29 or that they only counted 29 because you did one incorrectly. So just make sure that you are doing your burpees correctly and doing the right amount so you can get credit for that because it would be terrible to go through all those burpees and then not, uh, and then get penalized on top of that. Um, I will note that in 2019, Spartan included a trail race. And so I think that's just running the same trail that we do except no obstacles. So just keep that in mind if that's something that may interest you. I'm hoping that these new distances and new rules changes don't really take out the fun for me in 2020, but I'm gonna go out there and give it all I can. I'll hopefully run a couple more age group races this time. I, I would really, really love to get on the podium at least once. So I hope giving you these rules that kind of helps boost up your confidence, at least informs you to let you know what you're about to get yourself into. Like I said in many videos before, it is an incredibly awesome race to do for all fitness levels. Definitely do it in a group if it's your first time. If you can, if you have to do it individually, there will be groups there, I promise you. Just get out there and do it. You'll thoroughly enjoy it and it'll be worth your time, I promise. So uh, that wraps up this video. I hope this helps you. Uh, keep in mind that major changes start with minor steps and I'll catch you guys in the next video. That's good.